Hello everyone, I am Prasad from the Structure Guy. Today we are going to discuss about soil type. Please subscribe to our YouTube channel, you may get the notification on new videos. Classification of soil. There are different classifications for soil because we want to classify the soil to identify, uh, identify them. This classification are based on the its material content. We are not going to detail in, discuss in detail about this method. Just we see what are the methods. As to American Society of State Highway and Transportation Officials, they they this classification is basically uh, by them and also this is basically oriented the highway construction. That's that's another classification uh, by ASTM, American Society of Testing of Materials. This a unified soil classification system that's based on the ASTM systems. Just uh, we have to keep in mind there are some classifications based on the materials in the soil. And also they consider different different parameters when we when they classify these soils. So today we are going to discuss about these para these type of soils. So you, you can see here the gravel clay soil, silt soil, sand, peat and there are another two types. So these are the things we are going to discuss today. So in this figure you can see depending on the clay, silt and sand content the, the classification of the soil is vary or the type of the soil is vary. So at top corner we have clay and the, here we have silt at the right bottom corner and top uh, bottom left corner we have sand. So if you take the clay soil, when the percent of silt content increases, it becomes silt soil. When you take the clay and sand variation, when percentage of the clay increases in the sandy soil, then it becomes clay soil. So you can see here sandy loam sandy clay loam is here sandy clay so the variation is happen like this so here also from seal to sand is change the main thing is the change in the sand content in that soil so depending on the clay content silt content sand content variation the type of the clay type of the soil will vary let's discuss about each type of these soils in detail Gravel. What is gravel? Gravel is a loosened aggregation of rock fragments. Or else, gravels are formed due to the sedimentation and erosive nature of the rock. They are basically formed from the rock, kind of a feather rock. We can we can identify as like that. This top figure, this figure we can see the type of gravel we can observe usually and also then these type of soils also can be considered as a gravel type. This is also kind of a gravel. So what are the basic parameters of the gravel? Now it's we categorize based on the its element or its material or particle size. Fine gravels. When we say fine gravels, the particle size is in the range of 2 to 6 mm. Medium gravel 6 to 10 mm. It's like this. The coarse gravel 20 to 60 mm, that's uh, size of the aggregate, that's around 1 inch to 2 inch. Very coarse gravels, 6, 60 mm to 200 mm size. Boulders, any, any gravel material having size more than 200 mm, that is a kind of a boulder. So gravel, is, gravel soil is good soil to construct a structure, it's hard. When it is like this, but not like this, but when it is like this, it's very hard. We, have, we can have a foundations on them. Clay soil or clay soil. Depending on the clay content, this clay soil is, is identified as we discussed in the previous figure. Clay is a fine grain natural soil material containing clay minerals. Having clay mineral, we say clay, the variation of the clay content. We convert different type of material like sand or silt. Particle size of the clay soil is less than 0 0.2, 0 0.3, 0 0.4, 0 0.5, 0 0.6, 0 0.7, 0 0.8, 0 0.9, 0 0.10, 0 0.11, 0 0.12, 0 0.13, 0 
point zero zero two millimeter generally. It's very stick and roll like plastic when they when it wet. We can roll it like uh, plastic in when it is wet. That's kind of a property, and also that's we use to identify the clay soil. We can uh, now in when you take sand, it doesn't happen in the clay soil. It's happen, so we can differentiate the sand and clay like that. Clay can hold more water than the other type of soils due to its sticky nature. Due to the sticky nature, and it can hold more water. Clay get swell when when wet and shrink when it dry. Now they, this is kind of a parameter we can see in the clay soil. You can see here even there are cracks in the soil. So when it when it uh, when it uh, the, the its water evaporate it shrink. So cracks will appear. So this is this has a, some kind of relation to to the expansive soil also. It's kind of a soil that change the volume of it. So similar similar thing we here discuss also. But expansive soil is somewhat different. But from the clay, that clay also have a similar kind of things. Clay though sometimes it's uh, it's very hard material we consider in the foundation construction hard in the sense uh, not favorable material in, in construction sometimes but in in some in some occasions it's a very useful material for example dam construction earth dams we some completely use clay soil due to its uh, low permeability we use clay in the dam body because higher with the clay having clay in the dam, uh, a dam the it's it's restrict the movement of the water through the soil. Another thing, an, another area we use uh, clay in the rock fill dam, very large rock fill dams. We use clay. Uh, clay co is constructed in these dams. Then with with that we can we can maintain the maintain the water permeability if you take dam like this so we have a clay core like this like this so slide like this. this in a part you you might have seen in the drawings this is not the exact shape but here you have a clay core here you have a transition material and rock fill here so the rock through the rocks easily water can move so we put the clay to avoid the water movement so it's step, step, it's stabilized by the rock fill and the, this nature of the fill. Uh, so there, there are standard slopes for this. So depending on those stabilized there, uh, then uh, the water movement is controlled. Uh, therefore, clay is a use of mat useful material. But it's sometimes when you're building a place of putting or raft, if you have a clay there, then there is a different scenario because it could lead to a consolidation settlement and many other issues. What if clay found under the foundation? So as I discussed, now if we have a clay under foundation, we have a certain problems. So what we need to do is we have to treat it. There are different different methods that we can adopt it in this. Preloading is one of method to avoid the uh, consolidation of settlement. Then other thing we may use alternative foundations like pile foundation or driven pile or the micro pile cast in situ board file whatever the file foundation could be used then it's rest on the hard layer it's and rest on the rock then soil stabilization method also we can use those those kind of things they are when we have when we have found the clay. Uh, the, in simple construction, small scale construction, its the ground treatment may be done. Silt. This silt is a granular material having a particle size between sand and clay. Its particle size between sand and clay. So the particle size of the silt is in the range of 0 0.002 millimeters to 0 0.005 millimeter. It is mostly mixed with the clay and sand. Or sediments. These sediments come from the water mixed with this uh, soil and it's create the silt. Silt are made up 
of the rock and mineral particles it's, it's in, initiated with the rock and mineral particles silt deposits are made to, by the transportation of the ice water or wind this way we can see this silt deposits uh, very close to the areas rivers or uh, water water parts in those areas we can see this silt deposits very frequently silt mix with the sand when it's mix silt with the mat we can say silt sand when silt mix with the clay we can say silt clay clay silt would be most cautious thing we have to be we cautious we have to be cautious when we find the silt clay because again the, those properties which discussed in the clay clay soil could apply for the silt clay also silt tend to hold more moisture due to its fineness since it is a fine very fine it's hold more moisture and it won't release this moisture it it does not dry as other type of soils due to the poor tendency of the water drain like a clay silty soil also very poor in water drainage so therefore it won't dry then then this got due to the compressibility problems will come settlement issues will rise so therefore silt soil uh, silt soil uh, will create the movement of the foundation and we it could create unfavorable conditions in this figure also we can shown here in the bottom we can show here shown here the particle size variation on the different different type of soil you can see here see this between sand and clay it's very fine material sand i think we all know what is a sand is it no there are no much to discuss about the sand Uh, how you we we have to record that here as a as a construction material sand is one of the most used uh, construction material in the construction sand is a granular material composed of fine fine divided rock and mineral particles its particle size in the range of 0.05 to 2 mm sand is a finer than gravel and coarser than silt as you see in the previous figure also it's its size of the particle uh, particle size is greater than silt and less than gravel mostly this is used in the construction uh, used as construction material there are many types of sand out of those pit sand river sand sea sand manufactured sand we can identify so in early days we mostly used the river sand for the construction with the development of the construction industries and also due to the shortage of the material and also as a alternative to the to the material that's because now when we use sand there are very very big environmental issues we take sand from the rivers and those the sand deposits then there will be a certain environmental issues those due to those reasons people were or engineers were found different alternatives so river sand instead of the river sand use of the sea sand and manufactured sand was started with that sea sand we can directly extract from the sea and we let it uh, remove the unfavorable material harmful material like uh, chloride sulfate magnesium like a harmful material we have to remove from the sand sea sand then we can use it there are different method for that we can let it remove those material by naturally by rain, due to rain when water put it into the when rain is come when rain is when rain is there then the water will be go through this particle and this will be wash out otherwise we can manually this has to be clean this is also can be done but the most the easiest method is let store in a large, large land and let it uh, remove those harmful material naturally manufactured sand also kind of a material is not the core dust we use for in the construction work but uh, manufactured sand is different from the core dust have gradation that that is acceptable for the construction 
that is acceptable before the concrete work there is a certain gradation that particle size distribution should be there in this manufacture stand that's what we can that's what we can use for the construction directly we can't use corridors for the construction that's what we should keep in mind peat or peat soil peat is a some kind of a trouble making soil in the construction if you found, found peat under the ground when we do a soil investigation it's very terrible thing i mean so the expectation of the foundation is now rely with the pile foundation in mostly because you might not be go for for shallow foundation due to the nature of this peat soil peat talks accumulation of the vegetation and the organic material this is kind of a thing peat forms when plant material does not decay in acidic and aerobic conditions if uh, due to that that is the reason that peat is formed peat is classified as the soil that has higher percentage of organic matter this is a organic uh, soil actually it has a higher organic content as i mentioned previously this due to the undecayed this uh, organic things organic uh, matter peat is formed bulk density of peat in the range of 800 to 120 kg per meter cube it's nearly around the density of the water so we can understand now when uh, other so it's like uh, 1800 to 2000 normally so in density 1800 to 2000 here 800 to 1200 it's very less density is there it's very soft soil so due to the low specific gravity and higher water holding capacity there are many issues now let's see how it's affect to the our structural thing or our foundation and geotechnically aspects of this poor consolidation consolidation properties and it cannot be easily compacted it has a poor consolidation property and it cannot be compacted uh, because its nature so since it's soft soil it moves when we compact so it's very difficult to compact compressibility of the material uh, cases uh, causes higher sediment in the foundations now since this material is compressible it causes high settlement now as you can see in this soft material with due to this softness softness it's compressed when 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 the volume reduces settlement increases so when you do the construction work we have to be aware we have to do the soil investigation correctly if you mistakenly build a foundation on a peat soil you will be in trouble high liquidity of the material causes lateral movement or as we can as we see or okay, since it is soft when you apply load it move laterally if you can't move downward it is compressed also and also it move move the downwards or laterally when loads are applied this causes again the increase of the settlement of the foundations therefore we have to be very careful when we designing a foundation for pt soil special precautions shall be taken if you don't treat it well if you are not improve the ground if you are not stabilize this soil there will be issue if you put the shallow foundation on there the best alternative for this kind of soil would be the pile foundations so therefore identifying the type of soil is very important we have discussed different type of soils today so having aware about the type of soil we are going to build the foundation or we are going to design the foundation is very important therefore designer should be aware about those facts and it's very important to note that we should do a proper geotechnical investigation and also adequate geotechnical investigation before carrying out designs and constructions That's it for today. Thank you very much for listening. I'm Prasad from Structural Guide.